tonight. Amen. 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 Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of John. John chapter number 1. We're going to read verse 14. John chapter 1, verse number 14. Let me know that the entrance of the Word of God giveth light. Amen. It, it gives light and to those that are in darkness. It gives uh, life to those that are dying. Amen. Thank God for His Word. Amen. John uh, 14, uh, John 1, verse uh, 14. Amen. John 14, 1, I'd be talking about heaven tonight. That'd be okay, but <laughs> we're going to talk about how Jesus left the glories of heaven and came to this earth. Amen. Uh, John 1 and 14. If you're there, shout amen. 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 Once again, we're so glad to have uh, everyone in service with us tonight. I'm so glad to see uh, James again. God bless you, James. So glad you're here tonight. Uh, I'm so sorry. I forgot your name, but Mark's friend. God bless you. I'm so all looking at getting all shy. And I'm so glad you're in service uh, with us tonight. I pray the Lord just minister to you and uh, touch you tonight. And Sister Debbie's got a grandson. Oh, Joe. Joe. All right, Joe. God bless you, buddy. I'm so glad that uh, you and, of course, everybody else. And my sister, uh, once again tonight, God bless you. Amen. God is good. John uh, 1, verse 14. And the Word, say the word. the word. The Word became flesh and dwelt, lived among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father. Let's read this part together. Full of grace and truth. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he is full of grace and truth. He is full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds able to comprehend. I pray right now for mental and spiritual clarity to be granted, Lord, for this next duration of 20, 30 minutes or so. Give us clarity of thought to receive this word. Right now, I bind every demonic foul of the air that would try to steal this word from finding a lodging place in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, have your way tonight. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Full of grace and truth. 2,000 years ago, the Word, Jesus Christ, left the splendors and the glories of heaven to live and dwell in a sin sick world. Not because he had to, not because he needed to, not because he was forced to, but because. He loved you. That's why Jesus came. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever would just believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's why Christ came in order that you, man or woman, might have everlasting life. You see, due to sin, there was a major gulf, a giant gap between us and God. You and I had no rights whatsoever to approach God. We had no right to commune with Him and talk with Him. We were sinners separated from a holy and just God. But the Word, Jesus Christ, became flesh. God became a man. And that man died for our sin. And as a result of our faith, being upon what Jesus did at the cross, you and I now have life and life more abundantly. It's all because the Word, Jesus Christ, lived the glories of heaven, came down to this world. Can you say amen? amen? Jesus didn't look like anything special. He really did not. He looked just like anyone else. Isaiah 53 and 2 tells us that Jesus, when He grew up, 
There was no beauty that we should desire Him. Isaiah 52, 14 tells us that whenever Jesus died, His face was more marred, more disfigured, more gruesome and, and tore up than any other man. And that is a fact. Jesus didn't look like a king when He grew up. Jesus sure didn't look like a king whenever He died. But it didn't change the fact that Jesus was then and He is now the King of Kings uh, and He's the Lord of Lords. Can you say amen? Yes. Under the old covenant, you and I could not experience the glory of God. Only the high priest on the Day of Atonement could enter into the very Holy of Holies to behold the beauty of God Himself. But now, because of what Jesus did for us at the cross, you and I can boldly enter in into the very presence of God and behold His beauty and His majesty. As I enter into the very Holy of Holies, you can say, I can see His love. I can see His grace. I can see His truth. And I've come here tonight to tell you a little bit about His grace and His truth. Amen. Amen. Number one tonight, uh, He is full of grace. Amen. Amen. That's good news. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbors and say, He's full of grace. He's full of grace. He's full of grace. Uh, John 1 and 14 says, And the Word became flesh. Uh, who's the Word? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is the Word. Uh, the Word, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, we, the disciples, beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, John said. Oh, I'm so glad uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ is full of grace. Uh, he is not running low on grace. Uh, he's not got half a tank of grace left. Uh, he's not struggling to find grace, uh, but the scripture tells us that even now he is full of grace. Grace. If you look up that word full here in your Strong's Concordance, you're going to see that it actually means to be covered and even overflowing. Amen. So in an example, you can say that not only is God's cup full of grace, but it is spilling out of grace. It's running over. You, you just can't escape the grace of God. His grace overflows in my family. It overflows on my job. It overflows in my finances. It overflows on my vehicles. His grace overflows on my babies, on my children. His grace overflows on my church, on my ministry, on my marriage, on my life. Everything I have is a result of the goodness and the grace grace of Jesus Christ. If all Jesus ever did for me was save my soul and rescue me from an eternity in hell, I'd still have a million reasons to give God praise, but that's not all he's done. He is full of grace. His grace didn't just save me, but it heals me. It gives me mental clarity. It sets me free from the power of sin. It gives me over the devil. It gives me victory over temptation. It gives me victory over my flesh. That's what the grace of Jesus Christ does. He is full of grace. Not running out. Not just sputtering. But he's full of grace. And that is good news for you and I. Can you say amen? Oh yes. His grace overflows all throughout my life. He's delivered me. He's blessed me. He's provided for me. He's protected me. He has kept me. Every blessing that I have is a result of His grace. You may be thinking, what again is grace? What is that? We talk about grace a lot. What is grace? It is God's love and favor given to people that don't deserve it. How many know you don't deserve God's grace? Amen. I heard Brother Ray. I said, how many know you don't deserve God's grace? Amen. Amen. You don't deserve nothing good from God. Oh, yes, none of us deserve His love. None of us deserve God's favor. None of us at all deserve God's goodness and His kindness. But God gives it to us on a daily basis because He is full of grace. John said that we, who, the twelve disciples, we beheld His glory full of grace. 
grace and truth. As the disciples watched the life of, and ministry of Jesus, they saw his grace in action. They didn't just hear about grace. They saw it in action. How do you know this world don't just need to hear about us talking about grace? They need to see the grace of God in action through you and I. When Jesus rescued the woman caught in adultery, the disciples said, Behold, he is full of grace. When Jesus reached out to sinners and tax collectors, the disciples said, We beheld Jesus full of grace. When he reached out and touched a leper that nobody else wanted to touch or be around with, the disciples were left with one conclusion, especially John. Behold the Lamb of God who is full of grace. Why don't you lift up your hands in this sanctuary and say, Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. I didn't do anything to earn it. I, didn't, I couldn't buy it. All the money in the world couldn't buy it. But he freely gave it to you and I. Why? Because he's not running out of grace. He's full of that grace. It's not only in him, it's overflowing from him. He is the very essence of grace. And I'm glad that his grace has flowing all over my life. Can you say it? grace for little Phil, but there ain't enough grace for Robert, no. There, there may be enough grace for Christina, but it ain't enough grace for Mark. No, no, no. That's not the God that we serve. Amen. The God that we serve isn't running on empty. The God we serve isn't running on low. No, 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 no. His check engine line of grace, if you will, has not even come on. Hallelujah. The Bible says that His mercies are new every single morning. You can't escape the grace of and the goodness of God because that's who Jesus is. He is full of grace and truth. Full of grace, full of truth. Number two, he is full of truth. Look at your neighbor say he's full of truth. He is full of truth. Once again, John 1, 14, if you want to read it aloud, that's okay. You can read it off the TV. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we, who's the we? John and the disciples. Wouldn't it be great if you were just there and you could have saw the miracles that Jesus did for yourself? You'd say, I beheld His glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It's not full of truth and no grace. It's not full of grace, but yet no truth. No, no, no. Grace and truth go hand and hand. He is full of grace. He is full of truth. Some people are full of deceits. <laughs> Amen. Some people are incapable of telling the truth. Someone, there are some people that could tell me the sky is blue and I look up. Amen. Why? Because they have proven themselves to be full of lies and hypocrisy. Politicians a lot of times are filled with deceit. You can always tell when they're lying. The mouths begin to move. Can you say amen? But Jesus, he didn't like that at all. Amen. 1 Peter 2 and 22 tells us that Jesus committed no sin. Look at your neighbor and say, he never committed any sin. He never committed any sin. If he had committed sin, he wouldn't have been a good sacrifice for us. And we'd be wasting our time here tonight. Can you say amen? He committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Oh, Jesus is the very essence of truth itself. Oh, yes, Jesus declared of him his own self and gave himself the title in John 14, 6. I am the way the truth. Look at your neighbor and say, he's the truth. He's the truth and the life. And no man comes unto the Father except through me. Amen. Jesus is full of truth. The other night, I took Sister Miranda to the mall. And, uh, well, first of all, I said, honey, let's go on a date. She said, oh, where are you taking me? Big daddy. I said, well. She said, where are you taking me, big daddy? I said, yeah. 
<laughs> we going. We going to Texas Roadhouse. We going to the mall. He said, "When are you going to get me at the mall?" I said, "Get you a dress or something." I call her a dress, not three. <laughs> sure enough, we go. We have a good time. We go to Sister Edna's memorial the following day. And before we even get here, Miranda comes downstairs. She's wearing one of the new dresses. I look at her and I go, You're proud of Mama, you look good. I don't need your glasses, Rick. Mine work just fine. I said, Mama, you look good. You know, <laughs> it doesn't look that good, does it? You know, you know how you ladies are. Hey, I'm confused. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm so ugly. <laughs> My, what you're doing is you're fishing for compliments. Everybody knows you're pretty. And you're creative. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, brother. Let's not go there right now. I'll use you in an illustration, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but all she put out, ooh, mama, you look good. Sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you just keep on. <laughs> Brenda comes down the stairs this morning, though. And she's wearing another new dress. And, and all of a sudden, she kind of, you know, walks in that kitchen area. Attention. Hello. Can you see me? Hey, babe, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> do you like my dress? What do you think about it? And I go, oh, yeah. I, I like it. I like it. That looks great on you. She said, you're lying to me. Oh. She said, yesterday you complimented my dress without me even having to tell you to, but now I'm having to make you compliment me. So I said, honey, it just, it looks great. She said, tell me the truth. I said, to me, it looks like something maybe a, an older lady would wear. <laughs> I didn't see it, Diane. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So sure enough, sure enough, I'm just kidding, baby. I'm just kidding. All right, let me preach, everybody. All right, I'm a pastor. So I, so I get into church today, and Dolores says, Pastor, I need to talk to you. That dress does not look old. <laughs> and, and then all these other people are just like crucifying me over, over what I had told Miranda. But, uh, oh, I just paying her back because a couple weeks ago I went to J.C. Penney and I went to the short and wide section. You know, it's supposed to be big and tall. It's really short and wide. You know, there ain't no tall people walking around that part of J.C. Penney. So I go in there and I just I get me a shirt and it's an Adidas shirt. Man, it looked good on me. I tried it on in the little fitting area. And I, man, this looks good. On me. Now you gotta hit the gym with there. I told Miranda. I said, Hey, what you think? She goes. Honey, that looks great on you. Let's, let's get you a couple of those. All right, cool. Get home and let it go through the wash and I put it on and then I, I come downstairs. Miranda is sitting on the couch and she looks at me and she said, what in the world happened <laughs> to that shirt? I said, what's wrong? <laughs> she said, is that your shirt or is that Nathan's shirt? <laughs> sure enough, my sleeves shrunk up to here, Randy. Oh, brother, that shirt became a little belly button shirt. And I was going to wear it to town. <laughs> it's a new shirt. I didn't want to waste my money. She said, you ain't wearing that. I can see your belly button. <laughs> so you get that shirt, and I took it back to J.C. Pitt, and I said, this shirt shrunk too much, and I ain't paying for that. They, they gave me my money back. Thankfully, thank God for that. And, uh, but, you know, when you love someone, you're going to tell them the truth. Yeah. I said, when you really love someone, you're going to tell them the truth. You ever told somebody the truth and then they just got mad at you? Yeah. That's because they didn't understand what love was. 
Love isn't just saying, oh, you're fine just like you are. Hello. Ah, oh, no, nah, you look great and you're really thinking, <laughs> then, then you look in the mirror. Truth will say, yeah, that, that, ain't, that don't look good on you. Having the truth will say, spiritually, that don't look right on you. Spiritually, that, that makes you that makes you ugly. Those words that come out spiritually, that don't fit you. It's good. Spiritually, that that doesn't make you look right. Amen. Here's the truth. You have two choices. Heaven or hell. Here's the truth. I hope you didn't come here just for me to tell you you look great. I'm coming to tell you the truth. Spiritually. If you don't know Christ, one day you will take your last breath. You'll die. You'll go to hell. That's the truth. Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's the truth. Here's some more truth. You ready for some more truth? There's a Savior that died for you. His name is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him or without Him was not anything made that was made. That Word, His name is Jesus. John, the beloved, the young disciple, I think he was maybe about 15, 16 years old, did they say at that time. John, this teenage disciple. Young people, don't ever think that you can't do nothing for God if you will sell out to Jesus. You can be like John was. John was the one laying his head on the chest of Jesus Christ. Amen. John declared of himself, I don't want to be boastful, but the one in whom Jesus loved. <laughs> sure enough, John said, we beheld his glory. He's the only begotten of the Father. He was full of grace. He was full of truth. What do you want tonight? You want me to lie to you and say, Ah, oh, yeah, continue on in your sin. Continue fornicating. That's all right. Come on. Keep, stay involved in the drugs and, and the alcohol and the, 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 the porn and stay involved in, in, in the adultery and stay involved in, in the witchcraft and stay involved in, in, in the demonic realm and stay involved in, in lying, stay involved in stealing and thievery and, and violence and fighting. And go ahead and continue on in, and you'll go to heaven one day. I'd be lying to you. But I'm here to talk like Jesus talked. I'm here to give you God's grace, present that to you. He's full of it, full of grace and truth. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. What are you going to do with the truth tonight? Are you going to ignore it? Try to sleep it off? Try to drink it off? Try to snort it off? Try to smoke it off? Or are you going to apply it to your heart and be changed? Amen. You, me, shall know the truth truth shall set you free. Why don't you lift up your hands? Just close your eyes right now. Lift up your hands. And behold the face of the Savior. Behold the Lamb of God. Full of grace. Grace that is greater than all your sin. Full of grace. Full of truth. When you love somebody, to tell them not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. Have you ever had somebody tell you something that was painful? Have you ever got mad when somebody told you something that was painful? But you had two choices. Take the reproof and grow, or ignore it, take you on your sin. A good father. Don't let his children run wild. Hello, somebody. A good father will say, no, 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 no. You weren't created to be an idiot. 
You weren't created to live a life of selfishness and end up in hell one day. You were created to live this life to the fullest and to know Jesus. Amen. Some of us right now, we're at a crossroads. We, we have presented before us two sides. One side's his grace. One side's his truth. The truth is without Jesus, you'll die in your sin. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why don't we stand? Let's see. Lift up our hands to the Lord. Why don't our musicians come? Hallelujah. He is full of grace. He is full of truth. Heavenly Father, I preach what you lay upon my heart. And I pray now, God, that we would be receptive to your word. Not just hearers of the word, doers of your word, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus.
Verse 24. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Jesus didn't pull any punches. Jesus didn't sugarcoat it. He was full of grace. But he was full of truth. And he gave them the truth. But thank God where the truth is presented, God's grace is available. Oh, let's just lift up our hands unto the Lord once again. Oh, yes. And we exalt me. the little ones from coming to me. Let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Sister Lena's request about that little baby who, through technology and testing, they're saying that they are seeing that there's going to be some difficulties and problems in the brain not developing properly.
wisdom, God-given wisdom. Keep your hands upon little Josiah and his grandfather and his family. Lord, we pray for Frank that you keep your hands upon him as he's going to be traveling back to work very soon. We'll be with him and Ashley and the children. Bless them, I pray. Father, we pray for every marriage, every home, every widow, every person here. That your blessings will rest upon them. We're so thankful, Lord, that your grace overflows. It spills out everywhere. May your grace spill out on every marriage this week. May your grace spill out on our children as they do their schoolwork. May your grace spill out on our appliances at home, on our vehicles, Lord. May your grace spill out, keeping us safe and protected. Lord, we just ask these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless y'all. Love you. Especially him and Paul.